<laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. And thank you to Tag for allowing us, well, for inviting us to have this session, which is really not your average Tag session. So I'm really pleased that they, they took a punt. I don't think there's probably no one from the Tag organising committee here, but I have said thank you to them as well for um, having a field contracting sector session. Um, I have, so the, spe the speakers are mainly drawn from my colleagues at work. Um, so I've brought some really aggressive <laughs> signs. So if you go over your time, uh, I will shout those out the way those at you. But actually, we're probably fine because Dan, who's speaking second, I think, um, is stuck on a train. So we, he might go after tea so we can be really relaxed. And we've got four to five minutes at the end for discussion, which may be either too long or nowhere near long enough, depending on how it goes. <gasps> <laughs> well, we, we can continue, exactly, exactly. So um, I just wanted to set the scene. Oh, the other thing I should say is that I didn't ask any of the speakers for biographies. I'm going to introduce you. I, I got your biographies off the Mona website for no. most of us. <laughs> so I can only apologize. Well, you're not, no, you're not on it. And North Heather. So that, that, I'm going to come on to that later on. <clears throat> but one of the things that, um, that I would also say is that there is a parallel session running at the moment about MHI, which is Mola Headland Infrastructure Joint Venture, which was set up to run um, Euston um, excavations along HS2. And they're talking about the archaeology that colleagues of mine dug um, in Euston, St James's, and, and Birmingham as well. And nobody from the Mola field team is speaking at that. Mm. So I say that pointed at the beginning because it relates very much to what we're going to be talking about today. See, yeah, I started too early. You've been on time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why are we here? Um, well, uh, we're here because I, I think, having done this since 1995, that my entire career has been bound within the PPG 16 development control framework. Um, and the practice of archaeology, from my point of view, has really changed dramatically since I started. And I think that, that's reflected in everybody's experience as well. Um, some of the changes that are happening are at the bequest, um, behest of the people that we work for, so the developers and the clients. And they're not always within our control. So we'll probably talk a bit about that today, about who, um, who has control over the, the changes in method and practice that are happening really rapidly over our, uh, over our profession. <coughs> and we're going to be talking about things like digital recording and health and safety expectations, as well as other things like um, planning and setting and how archaeologists can contribute to the success of projects, development projects. But we're also going to be talking about, and particularly at the end perhaps, about how we can ensure that the contribution that we want to make is valued by everybody else, because we're obviously we're really used to moaning in pubs, but that's not always the most appropriate place. And I do understand that there's nobody here that runs a unit, so I'm, also, I'm preaching to the converted, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. So possible themes then, I think that um, archaeologists, we, we've, this has been a theme throughout the whole of time, my whole career, I'm not in it for the money necessarily, we're in it because we, we are engaged and interested in what we do uh, on a daily basis and um, I don't think often that the changes that are happening to our profession are, are considered in relation to the impact it has on us as, as people and as archaeologists. And the type of archaeology that we that we, that we get recorded and that we manage to excavate has changed hugely as well over the last 25 years and I think that's an issue that um, we need to really think about quite seriously. Um, the collaboration point I've got up here doesn't necessarily, I'm not necessarily talking about external professions, so contractors, developers, I'm talking about within our own sector. So I think we need to collaborate far more at the early stages of projects with curatorial staff, with planners, with people that, that understand the value of archaeology and can help persuade other people of that on our behalf and with <coughs> us. And I also think we should collaborate far more with the academic community, um, particularly when it comes to research agendas and, and how we better embed research into what we do on site and after. Also, the old chestnut of other employers, and we've talked a lot about this in the session this morning, about how if we collaborate um, on a business level, that it might make archaeology easier for people to work within. So if we can share staff and share expertise better and be less corporate in our approach, um, that might be a positive move. When I talk about flexibility in project design, I, I mean, that's a huge thing, and that's, that's another whole tag session, obviously, but um, I think archaeologists are really used to changing their minds really quickly on site, changing your priorities depending on, on the conditions, what the, what the developer, the client wants you to do, where the machines are, where they're going to break something out, um, who's on your site, who you're working with, all that kind of thing. Um, and we do it all the time, but it's not acknowledged overtly um, 
by other people. And I think that we should acknowledge it far better because we're really good at being flexible, actually. Um, the, the fourth point was added in, obviously, after last week um, because we don't know what the planning regs are going to do and the infrastructure bills and things will happen in the next few years. But the likelihood is that there'll be a lot of archaeology done and it will be done quite quickly. So um, this is something that we need to be considering really, at, I'm sure we are, they are considering it at corporate level, but archaeologists can have a, an input into that as well, I think. It'd be important to do that. And the last one about convincing our colleagues, lots of people that run archaeological companies these days, uh, and myself as well obviously, have, have only worked in development control sector, so we're only used to the way that things run now. And we've got really used to doing it in the same old way. And I think that if we, if we have a far less hierarchical, top-down um, approach to project management and people management, then archaeology will be better for everyone.